the host of Making Money on Fox Business, Charles Payne. You were just looking at the little numbers. Yeah, you, I mean, better than expected, but still less than we've had. Well, yeah, definitely. The trend is moving lower. It's better than expected. It's you know, it's it's interesting because uh, you'll hear different kind of adjectives uh, applied to this, right? It was stronger than expected, although when you consider we still have over 11 million job openings, you still wonder. Because the one thing I always look at, the first thing I look at, no matter what, is participation. Right. You want people participating in our economy. That actually went down. Uh, the participation number went down. The number of people in the labor force, the employment to population ratio went down. Those are the real things that you want to look at. The unemployment rate, uh, the way they measure it, it's so skewed and so wrong, it has, right. it's not reflected. Because if you drop out the labor force, you're not counted at all. So it, it was better than expected. Um, wages, 5.1%. Again, we were, they were looking for 5%. But remember, uh, inflation's at 8.6%. So right. in the real world, people are still going to be, people are still struggling mightily because their wages still aren't keeping up with inflation. Sure, and with inflation at 8%, uh, and the Federal Reserve, uh, you know, laying on the brakes, trying to bring the inflation rate down to 2%, that means they're going to jack up the interest rates as high as they can. But that, what, what that immediately does is that knocks people out of the labor market because right. people get laid off and people don't get hired. You know, it's so amazing if you think about this. Just regular folks out there, uh, you know, some politicians send them stimmy checks and they get all kinds of money in the mail. Uh, they go out and they spend it because that's why they sent it to them. And then all of a sudden, later on, because it sparks a sort of wage spiral and inflation spiral, uh, the Federal Reserve comes in and deliberately tries to ruin their lives, deliberately tries to make them, make them miserable. They want the employment, uh, unemployment rate to go higher. They want wages to slow down. Right. I mean, it's, it's so remarkable, caught in the middle of all of these policies. They're just average citizens out there. And that's why you have so much misery out there. So, poll after poll after poll, people are saying that it's never right. been worse even though you come out with, quote, unquote, strong job numbers. Well, and that's what the White House always says. And yesterday, uh, the spokesperson for the president was asked about it by our White House correspondent. And he said, uh, you know, according to the latest Monmouth poll, 88 percent of the people watching right now across America say we are on the wrong track. And her response was, we have a plan and it's working. It might be working for them. Because, because... Not working for us! I know, but remember, you just said it. We have a plan. The plan is to fundamentally change America. We are on track to do that. Right. We are going to cause you a lot of pain and misery on the, en route to that, but you're going to love it once we get there. Holy cow. All right, uh, before you go, we wanted you to weigh in on the assassination earlier yeah. today um, in Japan of Shinzo Abe, who was the longest-serving... Prime Minister of Japan. He was an arch conservative, but he was also known for abonomics, yeah. abonomics, because yeah. he was he had a situation with uh, deflationary circumstances, and he figured a way out of it. Well, you know, it, it's it, they're always going to debate uh, abonomics, in, in, in part because their Federal Reserve is doing the exact opposite of ours. They keep flooding the zone with money. They keep buying stocks. They're propping up the entire economy. Here's the problem: when he came into office, Japan was already in, in sharp decline. They've right. got an aging population. They're going to go from 120 million to 80 million people. He wanted to bring back what I call the samurai spirit. You've got these young men, the grass eaters. These are young men out there who just play video games all night. They don't want to emulate their parents. They don't want to work 80 hours a week. They don't want that. And, and unfortunately, their economy is dying. Yeah. It's, it, and he had tried his best to bring it back. He also tried to reshape the pacifist constitution which angered a lot of people. But let's face it, you had, you had leaders in other countries in Asia that were pleading with Japan, please, because we got an imperialistic China that's going to swamp everyone in Asia if we don't stand up to them. So, you know, I admired him a lot. I really did. It's, a, it's unfortunate. It's sad no matter who it is. But in this right. particular case, I think he was the leader that Japan really needs because they have, they're a cautionary tale for every country in the world, including America, because we've gone down that same path. Uh, you know, we have a dying old population uh, where young folks are, are being told they don't have to work or shouldn't work. And, and, you know, you just can't live off the fumes of the past. You've got to keep making yourself great every day. Well, thank you for the look back at you got it. his life and times. By the way, Charles is going to host a special town hall on July 26th at 2 o'clock. It's called Inflation in America. If you'd like to join the audience or send your questions, email him at investedinyou at fox.com. Subscribe to the Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly opens, stories that are changing the world and changing your life. I'm Tucker Carlson tonight.